It's Chris Jenkins, and I finally have my man Kawan Short joining me today. I've been talking to him all season about the community stuff that you've been doing, wanting to get you in here, and all you guys are in the playoffs, so I'm glad that you, you had a moment to stop in and give me some of your time in this busy week. Um, let's start by talking about last week, man. That was the first time in 10 years that the Carolina Panthers has won a playoff game. And it was, uh, you guys did it in great fashion with that, uh, what was it, 60, how many yards was it, you guys? About 70, about 75. 75 yards, complete offense. How did, that, how did that happen? What was it like to be a part <laughs> of something like that? Uh, first of all, it was unbelievable. You know, uh, I mean, but, you know, just sticking with these guys all year, you had the faith and you know, we capable of doing anything, but, you know, it's always a matter of time of how we're going to come together and when the right time we're going to come together. And, you know, it's Saturday just happened to be that time that, you know, everybody, you know, put their back against the wall and just came out swinging. Was there something like as you're playing that you're feeling, you know, sensing blood, feeling like that you're having this great performance? Are you just in the zone saying, next play, I got to cover my assignment? Oh, definitely. I mean, we, we talked about it all week that, you know, we, we, we had a mission going on and we didn't want to stop at the first round. And, uh, you know, being a wild card, a lot of people didn't believe in us. But in that locker room, we all believed in each other. And, and that's one thing that we started on all week. Uh, we, we took that to heed being an underdog. And, Went out Saturday and just had to had to do what we we, we wanted to do. Yeah, you got you had one sack and you had another quarterback hit. Um, getting that kind of pressure on the quarterback is that something that's that's something new, but it's, it's a great thing. Has that been keyed by <laughs> linebackers, the 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 cornerbacks? What, what's been the key for you guys getting some pressure up front now? Uh, one, I mean that's you know again all year being we've been capable of you know doing this and doing that, but. It was all talk, and we had, a, you know, we had numerous opportunities. And when we came to the last down to the wire, we took advantage of it. And as the defensive line, we strive on trying to get to the quarterback, so we had to play first and second down the run first. So, you know, you, you want to get that quarterback. You, you got to be successful in the first and second down, and every play got to be like it's third down. And that's that's how we strived, and that's how we took out these last couple of weeks. And as the defensive line, we've been pretty successful at getting back there and being disruptive to the quarterback. What was the atmosphere like at the stadium? Oh, man, it was unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> you know, just seeing the crowd, foot, the, the stands filled, and, you know, even in the rain and a little little breeze out there, mm -hmm. uh, it was it was rocking. It was kind of say we was kind of almost loud as the Superdome, but, you know, we, we got our own feel for it. Yeah. Then after the game, there was, you heard about the tra tradition after a home playoff victory going out doing the victory lap. Yeah, uh, that was unbelievable, too. I mean, you, you think there's going to be a couple people out there, and next thing you know, you walk around the whole stadium again, and having all these hands, people getting called your name and all that. So, you know, we, we, we take the fans and we hope they come out and, and support us Saturday. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned about being the underdog and that, that uh, earlier in the season, you guys were actually favored last Saturday. I don't know if you heard yet, currently you guys are an 11-point underdog <laughs> against Seattle. First uh, off. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, disrespectful. Okay. Uh, we feel that we, 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 we changed everything around for us not to be, you know, that, that type of underdog. But we're the underdog. We, you know, we take that and we, we, we feed off that. You know, we're even hungry now than we was early in the season. And you can see the atmosphere um, and practice and, you know, the enthusiasm everybody's coming with. We got no chance to be, you know, that type of underdog. And, but, you know, again, we, we, know we, we know what we believe in in that locker room and, and with the coaching staff. They, they call up a great game for us and we just go out there and execute it. And Saturday, the results just show itself. And you almost sound like Mike, because when Mike heard that, he said, man, that sounds disrespectful. He said, I I'm glad I'm not going to be out there. He said, well, I hope that makes our guys hungry on defense. And, it, you know, it's a tough game. Oh, definitely. I mean, we got the leaders to show it. You know, Charles Johnson and Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis. You know, I, I can name all everybody on defense. But, you know, just to watch those guys pray and practice, you got no, you got no choice but to feed off those guys. I mean, it's nonstop, you know, work, ethnicity throughout those guys and see it in practice. Uh, we feed off that, and, and that's why we go out there every Saturday or Sunday and play like those guys. Now, I know you guys are into your game plan for Seattle. I don't want to reveal any secrets, but <laughs> what's going to be the biggest challenge for that, that that matchup this Saturday night? Oh, man. I mean, we held it down the last two wires, from down to the wire the last two years, mm -hmm. and, you know, we just got to take that extra leap, that six inches that, you know, to put us over the board as far as keeping those guys off the board and, you know, point-wise, and, and the field position is going to be one thing. And, again, striving off the eating – energy off the special teams and offense. Uh, the one thing we really got to take care of is, you know, the guys in the backfield, Russell Wilson and, and uh, Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Uh, speaking of those two, well, speaking of Russell, he's had, he's lead the league with six rushing TDs this season. So you guys will, I'm sure that there's no secret about stopping him. 
uh, playing out there in Seattle, they're going to actually have the scientists out there for the playoffs. They're doing it all season, or well, this first playoff game. But they're going to be measuring, the, I think the big word is the seismographic something, of, of how <laughs> loud it gets and how much noise it's got. I know you guys today practice with the, with the speakers up. Have you, do you know what to expect? Was it one of those things you just... I've never been down veterans, there. Right? I've never been down there. So just hearing the guys, you know, a lot of the older guys talking about it, uh, it's crazy. They're saying it's, it's pretty loud in the Superdome, and that's probably one of the loudest stadiums I've been in you know, as far as the NFL. Uh, but, you know, I've played in big stages like the Big House in Michigan, and you know, those get pretty loud and rocky as well. So, But as a defense, you really won't hear all that going away games. But offense, you know, they're going to have to stay focused and – and stay heave of what you know what they're trying to do and the mission that they're going for. So you know, it's going to be loud. It's going to be crazy. I mean, it's a playoff game, so you know everybody's going to come with the big bang. But again, it's it's going to be the whoever play the best that wins Saturday. Right, I got a trick question for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can this team make the Super Bowl? I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I wish I wish I could say you guys be in the meetings with us on the field in the locker room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole different mindset, a whole different mentality right now that. You know, everybody in that locker room has and the focus of you know the guys that you thought was young like the the, the rookies i'm still a young guy and, and you know the focus got to step up tremendously right now in, in the playoffs and i believe that we could be that team that you know not, nobody expected that speaks highly of, of coach rivera that, that definitely, mentality definitely. That locker room. and just following his his whole mindset and his mentality that he's been going with this whole season you got no choice but to believe in him yeah okay appreciate it. now let's talk about off the field because you know, I like to highlight any time you guys are doing stuff off the field. So, go ahead. I'm just going to give you the floor. Take as much time because I know there's been Bible giveaways. There's been stuff at your old school back in, uh, in, in Illinois. Tell me about some of the stuff that you're doing. Uh, just starting off, uh, I teamed up with Athletes for Charity, and, and behind that is Kathleen Laporte. Um, I just hooked up with her through Twitter and a couple guys I played ball with in, co in college. Uh, they sent me her direction and just sat down with her and talked all the things that I wanted to do for East Chicago and some of the things, the ideas that I had. And, you know, she took that and ran with it and got back to me. And the first thing we decided was the book giveaway for the schools. And mm -hmm. seven, seven schools uh, in East Chicago, elementary schools, one high school, two middle schools. And so, you did that over, was it Thanksgiving? Or? I did it over the year. So the, just the, the, the whole trip. span of the year, just okay. going to different schools. Uh, I wasn't able to be at none of the schools because due to, you know, being down here playing in the NFL, but, um, you know, I had different people to go out there for me, like uh, guys from the Bears, one of my close friends that played for the Bulls, you know, the mayor, police, the fire department. All those guys helped me out tremendously. I wouldn't have done it without those guys as well either. But, you know, the whole thing was to, to, to stop the violence and try to minimize the violence that's going on in Indiana right now. And just starting off with the younger, younger uh, generation, mm -hmm. you know, putting books in their hands and showing them that I'm not too good to come back and give back to where I'm trying to go and how I'm trying to see the city grow. And, and that's pretty much the main thing about it. And, you know, I started tweeting about it and it took off tremendously. You know, yeah. uh, probably the most recognition I had was when we played Chicago Bears. Uh, they, they announced it on TV. I pretty had like, after that game, probably over 100 text messages talking about, yeah. I appreciate what you're doing for the city. and and all that, you know, and, and just to touch other people's hearts and other people's children, you know, it's just to be a mentor, that was one of the things that I really wanted to do. Yeah, so let's make sure we talk about your Twitter, because that's one thing I actually <laughs> think, like, I saw last week, or I think it was last week, about the Bible giveaway, mm -hmm. and I retweeted, I said, man, I need to check out his Twitter more, more frequently, but um, how did that go for you with now that? Now, that started, the Bible giveaway started around uh, Thanksgiving, okay. and it went on through Christmas, through the New Year's, actually still going on right now. Uh, it was just, you know, tweeting out a lot of Bible verses and a lot of people responded and wanted Bibles. So I signed a lot of Bibles and, and sent them back off. Mm -hmm. And now some of those guys getting Bibles in their hands and reading it and uh, it turned out big as well. So, okay. you know, and then I started doing the shirts to Don't Shop Short of Success with my numbers in the back. And what Don't Shop was, Short of Success? Yeah. I got it now. I got it. <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, Don't Stop Short of Success. And. I actually teamed up with a, a t-shirt company. If you buy one, another one will get donated to the children back at home. And I actually signed those as well. I sent those back to East Chicago. And, and that turned out 
big dramatically as well. So okay. uh, everything's been right now that's been going on with the Twitter feeds and, you know, a lot of people responding and, and giving us feedback. We appreciate that too. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to make sure for you guys watching all the stuff that Quan tells me about today that it's on the site. A little link for you to uh, check it out and get more information about it because some really positive things that you're doing. Yeah, I actually have a website. Uh, it's kwanshort.com. Okay. Some people, or I say most people, probably have a story behind their, I can't say words today, but their community, <laughs> the community efforts. Any stories or anything that really, as you're growing up, said, you know, when I, when I get the chance, I'm going to do this? Uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot. I could start here and go on forever, but uh, just a couple of things. I mean, growing up, you know, people without a father figure or mother figure in their life, uh, you know, tend to take different routes. And you got some people on a straight path. And, I mean, it, it's really no... You know, you know, dramatically way of people doing it, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, just seeing that and growing up with some of the guys that I went to school with, girls, men, and all that, and you see a lot of killings. And I probably over the last past year, been probably more than ten people I went to school with got killed. So wow. you know, and that's not. I'm only 25. Yeah. That's... And just imagine, you know, some of those guys younger than me, 17 year olds. Mm -hmm. I have nieces is 15, and you know, I'm kind of scared for them as well. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, just that that right there just hit home with me for a long time and, you know, really just trying to put a message in the little kid's head that, you know, following other people in the gang society is not is not the right route to go. And hopefully I can change that. And when I get done with uh, NFL this year, this season, we'll go back to the schools and, and talk a little bit and be principal for a day. And, <laughs> principal and try, for a day, huh? <laughs> and try to, and, again, try to help out and, and keep this message going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming on. Uh, appreciate all you guys for watching. Again, we're going to have all the information about uh, all of Kawana's social media and his website. If you enjoyed the video, please press the like button and also invite you guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, as I talk to guys like this and many other guys at the team, uh, you'll be able to check out those videos and see them as they first go online. So, Kawan, you got a lot to do. You got a big <laughs> week ahead of you. I appreciate you taking the time to come on in, man. I appreciate you having me, man. Appreciate all right. it. All right, boss.